Hello chess friends, hope you are doing well, today I have a very interesting chess game that was played in the computer chess championship, Blitz championship in season 24, you can watch these games on my own website named ramachess.com, and this game I am going to illustrate to you is very tactical and strategic, where Leela Zero brilliantly defeated me, but I love this game, so stay tuned until the end of the video and let's get started without wasting any time. Leela started the game with d4 and here we have e6, I want to play the d5 and c5 moves, and Leela here played c4, opening up the queen's line, which is also called the queen's gambit in some variations. Therefore, I also played a5, opening my king's diagonal because if Leela can bring up her queen early in the game, then I can also bring up my king early in the game because I am the chess king and Leela is my chess queen where I want to dominate over the semi-open rook f file, right. And here we have knight to c3 to dominate over the center, therefore, we have knight to f6, where I also create some dominance over the center, that's why Leela here played bishop to g5, pinning down my knight so I cannot put pressure on the center, but wait, Leela 0, I also have my bishop, which goes to the b4 square, pinning down your own knight as well, so, you also cannot put pressure on the center, if Leela can do this to me, then I can also take revenge for what she did to me. And in a few moves, I played castle to get access to my rook's file, we have bishop to d3, where the bishop is eyeing down the h7 pawn, and here I can play h6 or c5 moves, which is very cringy, along with bishop takes c3, but instead of all these moves, I decided to go with c6, I want to dominate over the center with d5, and Leela responded with knight to e2, she played knight to e2, not knight to f3. Because her knight to e2 plan is to consider f3 and g4 in the future to push forward her pawns on the king side to attack me, therefore, I immediately struck her by playing d5, attacking the pawn. Now, Leela played f3, where g4 will arrive on the board, she wants to play castle, where queen to e1 followed by queen to h4 can arrive to keep an eye on the h7 pawn, Leela, your plan is very brave, but hold on, I also have something special for you, my king goes to the h8 square because my rook has a semi-open file, where the king hides in the treasure house because there is a possibility of opening up the light square diagonal of Leela's bishop, we have some center exchanges on the d5 square. And Leela here played a very cunning move. She played her knight, jumping into the f4 square, directly attacking my center pawns, this knight reminds me of Magnus Carlsen, where he also goes to his chess tournaments by jumping on a chair or something like that, now, here we have knight to b6, where the knight is eyeing down the c4 square and also protecting the pawn, the king went to h1. Leela wants to consider g4 and h4 also to invade me, the bishop goes here, and here Leela played a very surprising move, can you guess what move Leela considered here? You can pause the video if you need, the move that Leela played is pawn to g4, this is a very romantic move because it gives me the opportunity to capture the pawn on g4, but can I capture the pawn? Let me show you the variation, if I dare to capture the pawn on g4, Leela's bishop's diagonal will be wide open, therefore, queen to e1 can come, she will not capture the pawn back on g4, she will consider going to h4 to join the attack on the pawn on the h7 square, where the knight is also pinned down, therefore, I have to play very carefully, and some chess players here might think of considering h6, bishop takes c3, or some other possible moves, another possible move is king to g8. Let me discuss these one by one, first of all, if you dare to consider h6 to attack the bishop, then I can slap you by playing knight to g6, checking the king and the rook simultaneously, so, in this position, if you dare to capture the knight on the c3 square, I will not capture your bishop because I have no interest in that, Leela would consider queen to h4 directly on the board to attack the pawn on h7, now, the pawn on h7 is protected by the knight, therefore. Some might think of considering bishop takes b2, picking up one pawn, but hold on, I have bishop takes f6, your pawn on h7 is under attack, and at the same time, your queen is also under attack. So, in this position, you have to consider h6, you have no other choice, don't be very greedy, therefore, 
I will consider bishop takes h6, forcing you to capture, and the king will be very vulnerable, and the position might become over for you. So, going back to the position, the best move for black would be to consider king to g8, therefore, white will consider bishop takes h7 check first, checking the black king, and because the knight is pinned, you have to consider king to f7, then, Li Lao will capture the pawn, maintaining the pressure, where the rook's possible file will be wide open after pawn takes g4, where the queen and bishop will simultaneously attack the black king, now, black needs to consider rook to h8, pinning down the bishop, then. Li Lao will capture the knight, then, I have to capture the bishop, protecting the king's position, and it looks like this position is very safe and secure for the black king, but something goes wrong here because the queen virus will come on the h5 square, checking the black king, and the king has only two squares to go. As you can see, these two dark squares, if the king goes to the e7 square, the knight check will follow, putting pressure on these pieces, and then I will not capture the rook first, white will capture the g4 pawn, attacking the queen and you can see that the queen has literally no squares to go, the only square left is queen to d8 and after that, queen to e5 check will arrive, the king goes there, and now you can capture the pawn on the g7 square, the king's position is very vulnerable, and black's position will be just over. So, let me share an inspirational quote in sudden with you. The mind is like water, when it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. When it's calm, everything becomes clear. So, returning to the main position, we discover that f takes g4 would be a very bad choice because the bishop's diagonal will be wide open, while queen to e1 followed by queen to h4 can arrive, therefore, I decided to consider knight to c4, putting the knight in a good square where it puts pressure on these two pawns, Leela zero here didn't capture the knight because if she exchanges the light square bishop for the knight. The problem for Leela zero would be that she will lose control over the light square diagonal, therefore, we have queen to e2, putting pressure on the knight, the rook goes here, and we have pawn takes f5, many players here might think of considering e takes f5, but can you consider this move? Let me show you the variation, if you dare to capture the pawn on the f5 square, then your bad luck will arrive with a thunderbolt, now, knight takes d5 will arrive because your knight on f6 is pinned down to the queen. Now the problem for black is created, the bishop on b4 is under attack, the knight on the c4 square is hanging, your two pieces are hanging, and also your knight on f6 is just distracted from the railway track, if you dare to protect your bishop, you will lose the knight, and if you dare to protect your knight, you will lose your bishop, so what will you do? The good move for black would be to consider d2 to put pressure on the rook, but it does not matter to Leela because she has bishop takes f6, attacking the queen. And after capturing happens on the board, the black king's position will be very vulnerable, at the same time, the pawns will be doubled up on the f-file, therefore, rook to f2 will follow, protecting the rook first, and your bishop on b4 is under attack, the knight is also under attack. So after the bishop moves back to a5, b4 will arrive, and you can see that your knight on d2 will be just dead lost, it has nowhere to go, and the position will be completely in the hands of Leela Zero. So, going back to the reason, we discovered that pawn takes a5 is a very bad choice, that's the reason why knight takes b2 is a good move, it sacrifices the knight right on the board, and if Leela captures the knight on b2, I will capture the knight, and you can see that you will lose the rook on a1. So going back to the position, Leela is not greedy, she is a very intelligent woman, that's the reason why she just moved back her bishop to b1, and this move is beyond human intelligence, no human on earth would consider bishop to b1 unless and until they are a 2000 rated chess player on chess.com, Leela also sacrifices her knight on the c3 square, and she wants to put the queen on the light squares, therefore, I decided to capture the free knight on the c3 square. If Leela is giving me ice cream or candy for free, why wouldn't I capture it? But the problem comes here, she played f takes e6 on the board, this f takes e6 move gives her the opportunity to open up the bishop's diagonal, also, the knight is pinned, 
the rook can come into g1, and the queen can go to g2 to slaughter the pawn on the h7 square, this pawn on e6 is very cunning and clever because it reaches the 6th rank, the bishop needs to hide in the dustbin, and we have queen to g2 on the board, while queen to h3 can arrive to put pressure on the pawn. And the knight is also under attack, the queen goes up to d6, and we have queen to h3 attacking the pawn and your knight is also under pressure, we have rook to c7 on the board, and now here many chess players might think of considering bishop takes f6 on the board, but bishop takes f6 seems like you are trying to checkmate me on the h7 square, but the problem for you is that after I capture the bishop, the pawn will be well guarded by the rook. So we discovered that bishop takes knight is a very bad choice. That's the reason why Leela here played a very stunning move, can you guess what Leela played here? You can pause the video here and try to figure it out. The move that Leela played is bishop to g6, this bishop to g6 is a very brilliant and tactical move, and that's why I love this chess game, I lost against Leela 0 with the black pieces, but I also love her intelligence, her soul, and her chess, now think about this move, the pawn cannot capture the bishop, and if you dare to capture the bishop with your bishop, then after knight takes g6 happens, my rook and king will be simultaneously under attack, after the king goes here, bishop to f4 will arrive. Putting pressure on these pieces, so after you think for a while, Leela will play a thunderstrike move, and she can even defeat you with her pawn, her knight and the queen are also attacking the pawn, the position would be very bad for you, right? So going back to the position, we discovered that bishop takes bishop would be a very bad choice, that's the reason why I just slid my king to the g8 square. The pawn is under attack by two pieces, but hold on, many players here might think of considering bishop takes f6, but bishop takes f6 is not so good because there is h takes g6, and I will control the position and manage the position, and your attacking chances will be lost. So going back to the position, here instead of playing bishop takes knight, which Leela didn't consider, we have bishop to f5 on the board, right. It is protecting the pawn, the knight moves back to the c4 square, and here Leela played a very crunchy move, you can see that the pawn on e6 is dominating over the board. The bishop, pair is doing a very good job, the queen, alongside the bishop, is making significant pressure alongside the knight on a4, also, the bishop can move back, the rook can go to g1 to get access to this half-open file, at the same time, Leela's rook is under attack by the bishop, but Leela ignored that and played a cunning move, which is e7 on the board, attacking the rook directly on the board, and think a little bit for a while, do you need to capture the pawn on e7? If you dare to capture the pawn on e7 with your queen, then knight takes d5 will arrive to attack your two pieces, right? So going back to the position, if you dare to capture the pawn with your rook, then bishop takes f6 will arrive, therefore, after you capture it, thinking that you are protecting the h7 pawn, it does not matter because there is rook to g1, and it will check the black king, after the rook blocks here, rook takes g7 will arrive, and consequently, queen takes h7 will lead to a checkmate, the position will be over, right? So going back to the position, we discovered that no pieces can capture the pawn on e7, that's the reason why many chess players again use their inferior brain and think of considering bishop takes a1, which is also a very bad choice, because now I can capture the rook and promote into a bishop on the f8 square, attacking your queen, therefore, after you capture it, I will play knight to e6 check, checking the black king, and the king has to go to the f7 square, now, I will consider bishop to f4. Uh, attacking the queen and the rook simultaneously on the board, therefore, after the queen moves here, I will play a very romantic move, rook to g1, attacking the pawn, and the pawn on h7 is also under attack, the black king will face malaria and tremendous problems from these pieces, alright. So going back to the position, we discovered that bishop takes a1 is a very bad choice, and I need to play very carefully, Leela is trying to dominate my position because her pawn reaches the 7th rank, the rook goes to the f7 square, trying to protect the 7th rank, and we have bishop takes f6, 
The queen cannot capture the bishop because there is queen takes h7 that will lead to a checkmate, therefore, some may consider playing g takes f6, protecting the pawn with the rook. But this is a very bad choice because it will provide the open g file for Leela 0 with rook to g1, after the king hides there, there is queen to g4, and checkmate will be inevitable, you cannot protect your position at all, right? So going back to the position, we discovered that pawn takes bishop is a very bad choice, that's the reason why we have rook takes f6 on the board, now, Leela captures the pawn, and after the king moves, we have rook to g1, attacking the pawn with two pieces, the king captures the pawn here, and we have king to d8, it looks like the king is very safe and secure, but here, a turning point comes on the board, Leela captures the rook on c7, making my position and my chess pieces discontented and very vulnerable. We have queen to h4, putting pressure on the rook, and at the same time, she is attacking the pawn on d5. We move the queen, and rook to b1 follows, attacking the pawn. b5 happened in the game, and we have knight takes d5, attacking the rook with two pieces, if you dare to capture the knight, that's what happened in the game, the rook was captured, and a few moves later, Leela cannot capture the bishop on e8 because her pawn on f3 is under attack, therefore, Leela first considers bishop to e4 to protect her king's position. In a few moves, bishop to d5 happens in the game to attack the knight because the pawn will be pinned, therefore, we move the queen, and shortly after, Leela considers queen to c8, where she threatens queen to a8 while simultaneously attacking my bishop, the bishop retreats, and we have queen to a6 on the board, at this point, Leela played a stunning move, the final move that blew my mind, she sacrificed her rook on the b5 square, what a beautiful rook sacrifice it is because it forces my king to capture it. And then she played bishop takes c4 on the board, bishop takes c4 happened in the game, and after the capture, we have queen takes queen, a few moves later, she captured my bishop, and with two queens on the board, she checkmated me, this game was absolutely mind-blowing and astonishing, don't forget to visit ramachess.com to watch my games, I hope you enjoyed the content. Wishing you all the best, bye bye take care and see you soon, don't forget to subscribe for more.